I'm returning to do a video on the reasons why our brains and visual systems can be pretty easily fooled by optical illusions. I always wanted this to be a 10 part series but kind of got waylaid by quantum strangeness somewhere, but I thought I'd return to this series a couple more times to finish my 10 part series. Don't worry I'll be returning to quantum strangeness soon, but if you enjoy optical illusions then stick around and maybe go and find the other 8 videos I've made on this topic. Let's go shall we? We're going to take another trip down Trickery Lane today and have a look at some more optical illusions and see if we can explain what's going on. But before we do that, if you could stare at the cross in the centre of the screen and I'll explain what we're looking at today. The illusions I'm going to cover today really look at contrast and how our brains deal with it. Well, let's find out more, but before we do, I've just been talking and stalling for time while you look at the picture on screen. If I now change the picture, you should see something interesting. Anyway, shall we carry on? Firstly, we can see a pattern of light and dark bands looking a bit like a zebra crossing, as we call them in the UK. Now onto this light and dark bands, we can now see two boxes moving across the zebra crossing. One of the boxes is lighter in colour than the other. Now to me at least, it looks like the two boxes are moving in a step-like fashion, a bit like feet stepping. In fact, this is called the stepping illusion. It looks like one of the feet moves first, and then the other foot moves, and then the feet take it in turn to step across the zebra crossing, if you like. I tend to find that this illusion works best if I don't concentrate on either of the blocks. Looking somewhere in the middle seems to work best for me. If I now remove the stripes, we can clearly see that the feet are just moving smoothly together and are not indeed stepping as we originally thought. We can even bring the stripes back but make them a bit less coloured and again the illusion is still broken. In fact, the illusion only occurs when the stripes are a strong colour like we can again see here. We can also see that the speed at which the feet move is important. At the speed that they're currently moving, the illusion appears to work, but slow it down to a crawl and the illusion is broken. Also, speeding up the moving blocks above a certain speed seems to break the illusion. So what causes this illusion to work? Well, there are a number of hypotheses to explain how it works, and these range from the fairly straightforward to the very complex. I'll have a go at explaining some of them here. One explanation for the effect occurs if I change the colours of the moving blocks to the same colours as the vertical bands. The illusion is now certainly evident. There's no contrast between each block and one of the coloured bars. The blocks definitely look like they are stepping now, and this is due to the fact that there's no contrast. We can't see the blocks moving across their own colours. Our brain's default state when we can't see movement is to assume that there is no movement, so we can only see the movement sporadically. Hence the stepping like illusion. If I bring the original colours back, then this leads to our a little bit more complex explanation. I'm going to bring the bars to a complete stop, and as can be seen, the leading edge here and the trailing edge here are both situated on the same colour. And it's the leading and trailing edges that gives us our indication of movement. Let's just look at the yellow bar. As it moves onto the black section, we can get the sense of movement from the fact that both the leading edge and the trailing edge are on black sections where there's a high degree of contrast and we can see the movement. The same but opposite is correct for the blue bar on the lighter bands. There is another more complex explanation that suggests that it's not just the trailing and leading edges that gives us our sense of movement, but also it's the sides of the bars that also are important in our sense of judging movement. But whichever explanation is correct, it's certainly an interesting phenomenon. In today's second illusion, I'd like you to stare at the cross in the middle of the screen. The screen shows the same image on both sides, but one of them is quite blurry. Try not to look at either of the images. Oh no, I've said that, obviously you're going to find that a bit more difficult, so apologies. 
Stir fixedly at the cross in the centre of the two images. Keep it up for just a few more seconds and then I'm going to change the image. Ready? Now. You should have seen that the image on the left suddenly became much sharper than the right hand image. This will hopefully last for a few seconds and then if you look again you'll see that both images on both sides are indeed identical. So what's happening here? Well in fact there are two visual systems at play here so let's have a look. If we stare at the image over a number of seconds something called contrast adaptation occurs. As I've said before our visual system is a survival system and one of its functions is to look out for danger. As we stir at the image and nothing appears to be moving, our brain devotes fewer resources to it because it isn't providing us with much information. One of the effects of this is that the contrast seems to reduce. The image on the left is providing us with less information than the image on the right, so our brain devotes less and less resources to it. When the image changes, the right hand image is now providing us with no more information because nothing has changed. However, the left hand image is providing us with lots of new information, information that could keep us alive. That part of the overall image now becomes a bit more contrasted in a process called contrast gain control. This system is very fast and so the image changes very quickly and then fades back to the normal levels of contrast. Also doesn't appear to matter what the image is, it's just the contrast that seems to make the difference. Okay, so that would appear to be all. If you enjoyed my illusions, then definitely pay a visit to the website where I get a lot of my inspiration from, and I'll put a link in the description below. And if you do enjoy them, then please consider subscribing and maybe liking. But for now, and until next time, Thank you for watching.